Hi, Joe. Joe. <laughs> How are you? Excellent hoodie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have to represent. <laughs> nice. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you ladies doing? We're good. We're good. Thank you for joining us. I know it was really short notice the way this all kind of came about today. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I could do it. You know, uh, I happen to have some extra free time on my hands for, uh, randomly. So Right, right. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, yeah, so first and foremost, I mean, how are you doing? How's the family? How's, you know, are you Chicago? We are, yes, we are, we are in Chicago. The family's doing good. I'm uh, staying at home here with my wife, my sister-in-law, and our two dogs. Uh, and um, yeah, we're, we're trying to stay as safe as possible. Good, 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 good. How That's about good. you guys? Good. <laughs> good. Yeah, good yeah. as y'all can be, I guess. I mean, you know. I hear yeah. that, yeah, absolutely. Lots Even of binging, lots of binge watching. Well, you know, yeah, I was going to say, best time for TV, uh, I mean, can you really, it, you, you could never ask for more uh, of an opportunity to sit down and just watch whatever it is that you've been missing out on. Right, uh, right. I, I, I feel for parents right now, I got to say, I stay at home parents, that's, oof, that is a tough, tough job. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're, I think you're recognizing just how invaluable teachers are right now. Yeah, a hundred percent. I've been babysitting all day, every day, and it's like killing me slowly in the best oh, way. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, well, it's, all, it's like, you know, they also, I mean, these children, I'm sure also want to have something to do with their lives as well. Like, it's like, yeah. it's trying to find ways to fill time is so difficult nowadays. Yeah, no, for sure. And it, I think it's set, finally settling in that like, oh, we're probably not going back to school this year. Like, this is kind of weird. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's happening. Yeah, that's it. It seems that way. Yeah, I know. I think we're going to all have to get used to uh, some new regulars in life um, over the next couple of months. It's going to be definitely a transition period. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, obviously, the production shutdown just kind of came out of nowhere. So how did you find out about it? Uh, you know, there were hints of it here and there a couple of days before we actually shut down. We were the last of the Chicago shows to shut down because uh, we uh, unfortunately had to take a couple of days off because, uh, I, weirdly enough, uh, one of our directors got sick and so we needed to find a replacement. Not corona related, it just, ha just happened to be sick. Okay. Uh, so we needed to finish up on the Saturday instead of the Friday, but we were all kind of on set. Um, and uh, we were brought together um, by the executive producer and told we were go at that, you know, at that time, I think people were thinking, oh, we're going to take a couple of weeks off and see where we go from there. And that's what we were sort of told. But then quickly after a couple of days later, it was just, we're going to wrap the season and you guys go off and be with your families and we'll pick this up hopefully uh, in season nine. Yeah. yeah, but at least you guys already knew that you were coming back from season nine and it's not just like a waiting game of like, oh, are we actually getting picked up? Because like right now we don't really know of many renewals just because like everything's been shut down and stuff. That's so true. Yes, uh, it is. And it is, you know, very rare and kind of unheard of that not only do you get picked up for a season, you get picked up for three. Right. So right. it was weird The the crew. Um, specifically was kind of on cloud nine, you know, for them to know that there's three years of television that they can rely on a steady work here in this city is a huge deal. Uh, and so we were all really excited, really stoked about it, uh, excited about the freedom that it gives the writers in terms of the, the potential for storylines, knowing that they can kind of work a little bit more long form. Uh, and so we were thrilled, yeah. And now I think hopefully we will be able to kind of pick up where we left off uh, if this thing kind of subsides by July. Um, but it, we are definitely in a kind of like who knows moments in this world. So uh, hopefully knock on wood, things will end up being okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. So obviously we're here because the big wedding episode is happening this week, or by the time this is out, it will have already happened. Um, and it's a big, beautiful church wedding and everything. What was that like to film? Um, you know, weird. Uh, I, my wife and I did not do a church thing. We're the kind, we did a non-secular kind of wedding. And so it was very different, though our wedding was also very formal. Uh, mm -hmm. We had kind of a 20s theme thing going on and like, we had a really super formal wedding, but it just took place inside of an old warehouse. Um, and uh, this was, you know, the biggest wedding Chicago Fire has ever done. 
um, I felt this weird responsibility uh, to like be like extra groomy. I don't even know if that's even a word you could say. <laughs> Just because it was like there, there was so much pressure on this wedding because it was so big, mm-hmm. um, and we're really kind of including everybody. But I think at the end of the day, when you see it. It was just a really good opportunity in general, I think, for everybody to get as dressed up as they possibly could and just have a moment where they could appreciate each other, you know, and just kind of have a moment of pure love. Uh, And I think after everything that Cruz has been through over the course of this season, um, it's not, it's nice, you know, uh, Derek and I talked about it a lot in the beginning of the year where he said, You know, we want to start off with a tragedy uh, and end on a high note. Uh, And we want to, you know, because it's like, that's how you kind of structure a story. Um, And it is really nice. And it's weird that it happens to be the actual almost kind of season finale. We got one more after this. But I think this is kind of the happy ending of the season in a lot of ways. Uh, And uh, and it was... uh, The weirdest part about it was the fact that I was looking at all of the people that were at my actual wedding, uh, filming while (laughs) filming my fake wedding, you know, because they were all there when I actually got married. Uh, And to see them all there again, it was just a really surreal, like, life imitating art moment. Uh, But, you know, amazing because I I work with amazing people. Was it everything you envisioned for Cruise? I, yes, in a lot of ways, yes. Um, I, I always imagined that it would be kind of a Catholic, a proper Catholic wedding, because uh, he is somebody who has uh, a deep level of faith. Um, and I also uh, knew that he would want to have, I'm so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are we live right now? No, I'm yeah. Yeah, you're no good. No joke, you guys, I, I actually think this might be my, like, my food delivery. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Second. Hello, please. I hope you use this on. Uh, <laughs> we can. Yes, hi, I'm so sorry. Y- you are? Yes, are you outside? Wonderful, thank you. Uh, I'll make sure um, to open the gate. If you could do me a favor and just leave it at the front door as I am practicing social distancing. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can just, yes. Uh, g- give me just one moment. Ladies, I'm so sorry. Can I have to? Go ahead, sorry? go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> sorry about that. You're all good. Um, you know, you got to support the local businesses. Absolutely. Exactly, 100%. Well, what'd you order? You got to tell us now. Yeah. Uh, umami burger. Okay. Uh, great place in uh, Bucktown. Wait, is it Bucktown? Yeah. Is that what? No, that's Wicker Park. Uh, great place in Wicker Park on Milwaukee Avenue. Um, it's a chain from LA, but they make awesome stuff. We'll note that next time we're in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. Um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, so it, was it everything for Cruz that you imagined? Yes, I, yes, I do. Um, I think uh, beyond I, what we just talked about, uh, the uh, kind of you know, traditional Catholic wedding, I think most importantly, uh, he's such a romantic. He's such a huge romantic at heart. Um, and Chloe is so insanely in love with him. And I think that that's what makes me happiest for the character is that he finally has somebody that loves him the way that he loves, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's so important for him. And I look forward to seeing how it evolves and, you know, which I have no idea of, uh, but I assume in much in the way that most uh, what marriages do. And so that will be, I think, a great experiment. And, and I couldn't be happier with uh, Kristen Gutowski. She's just such a wonderful actress and, human being and I'm yeah I'm on cloud nine yeah and so what's it like working with Kristen amazing you know working with Kristen is a lot like working with Miranda or um Kara you know they're insane um and super quirky and weird uh but all gorgeous at the same time somehow Mm -hmm. so it's like you know working with these like quirky gorgeous women that's it it's, it's it's a lot like working with the women i work with every day so i'm very comfortable with it that's great that's great <laughs> so there's a very poignant moment in the episode that kind of honors otis and acknowledges that like he's still with Cruz in this big moment even though he's not physically here and i'm curious like when you're filming a scene like that like what are you tapping into for the scene that scene uh you know um 
it depends on the moment. Um, I remember when uh, I had to do something like this uh, when Chloe was in the hospital and I had to have kind of a moment that was really linked to my mother passing away because it had just happened and I had just spent a lot of time in the hospital with her. So there was kind of a very real moment in my life that I could draw from. Right. Uh, and in this particular moment, frankly, it was thinking about the opposite of what it was thinking about Yuri and how he's not there and you know and all of the stupid stuff we do like in the locker room like that scene takes place in the locker room right and if you uh, you know it, it's it's an acting exercise that is, we're not going to get into right now but um uh drawing from moments of joy that are no longer available to you tend to I think well up emotion uh and so that tends to work for me so in that particular moment I was thinking about when he had that borscht fall all over his head in like season one mm -hmm. with that big Canadian joke and like not, and then us and our private moments in between takes of that moment and like losing it and having such a laugh and that got me there. So that was, that specific moment was that. Are you still in touch with Yuri? Do you guys talk often? Yeah, uh, we just texted uh, today because we haven't, had a chance to really sit down and chat and we were just making a Zoom date uh, <laughs> for some time this week. So yeah, we do, absolutely. So Crotus lives on. N that the Crotus will never die. <laughs> uh, if I have to embody it by myself right now in Chicago Fire, then so be it. But that energy and uh, our friendship is something that will last well beyond this show. Love it. That was awesome. So we know that the actor who plays Leon, Jeff Lima, he came back and was a part of this episode. Like, how fun is it to have him come back every now and then for all these big moments in Cruz's life? It's incredible, especially because Jeff himself has been turned into such an inspiring young man. Like, he's doing work in terms of getting scholarships to young Latinos in the arts uh, in a program uh, with NYU. And, uh, and he's just such a just well-rounded artist himself, you know? And... I remember him coming in uh, and admiring my then very fake hair uh, that they would like powder on um, because <laughs> I was balding and you know, it was an excuse to give me hair because they didn't want three bald guys on the show at that time. Um, I, I, he would just be so enamored with this like incredibly crisp haircut that I got. And he was like a teenager, like he was, you know, it was eight years ago. And like, he's such a just, baller young man uh and he's so and he's and he's always such a pleasure to have and every time he comes back i always want him there for more uh so i mean you know again we're i think one of the the things we've been luckiest in on this show uh is our guest talent and like we've run into a couple like daniel Kyrie, i think is the a, a perfect example of this uh, we come across these guest actors who just are so impressive and have so much dynamic uh, character to them that you can't help but want to have them on the show more. And we suffer from an embarrassment of riches in that uh, case. Like, I think about um, uh, uh, Herman's wife, Cindy. Um, she's, Robin, she's phenomenal. Again, we're talking about Kristen. Uh, and it, 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 there's so many examples of that. You know, uh, Treat Williams was one of our first. Uh, and it's just so much fun because they built such a big world. I think it gives us the opportunity being such a large family in general to like branch out outside of, of our immediate to go into those other characters. Uh, it's so much fun because there's so much talent and they're Chicago people and that, is for is everything for me That's yeah awesome. we always talk about how funny it is to have ritter and gallo you know the new millennials in the house just kind of pulling antics and stuff and this episode especially we see Bowden be like okay go ahead go tweet go do your social media thing they're really funny it's a nice like injection oh, of energy is it not i feel like I, I forget exactly what scene it was i think it had to do with her uh Bowden's diet and the two of them having to figure out all of that mess mm -hmm. i was watching them film it and i was like this is a crotus scene like if Yuri were here, this we would have been the ones somehow stuck in this situation three, four seasons ago. And it it was really strange watching 
these two guys kind of do a scene that felt very familiar to something that would have been in my hemisphere and thinking, wow, am I becoming the old guy on the show? Like, which is great, because I mean, I'm just gotta be following in Mouch's footsteps. So <laughs> to be the guy sitting on the couch is not a bad job. I'm not gonna complain, you know? No, no, not at all, not at all. And so why do you think Cruz didn't pick Leon to be his best man? Writing, I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, 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 quite frankly, I, I, can't, I can't really answer that question. I think, you know, there are, I think, logical reasons why Severide was the best man um, for the show. Uh, you know, quite frankly, in my world, I, wouldn't, I would have been interested if Brett were, were the best person. Um, like, uh, you know, a woman was my best person uh, mm -hmm. for my wedding. So I just thought that would have been another interesting parallel. Um, but it, it, I get the dynamic of the show and I get why we're trying to drive the storyline that way. So it just makes sense. Um, and also, again, an opportunity to see those gentlemen in tuxedos is one that should not be passed up. So, I mean, you said it for the record. We said nothing. That was all you. So. Yeah, you're, no, I, look, I, I recognize uh, the storytelling and what you need to do sometimes. And <laughs> sometimes you got to put those boys in a tuxedo. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. So I know you said, obviously, you don't know. I don't even think Derek knows yet, like, what's going to happen in season nine. But, like, do you envision, like, what do you envision happening to the Brett Cruz Foster apartment? Like, do you think Chloe moves in there or do you think Cruz moves out and into Chloe's place? Oh, we're still just going to live separately. Um, and I'm going to stay with Brett and Foster and Chloe can just, you know, she's got a really small studio apartment. No, I, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming that, yes, we would be moving in together um, and finding a place. Um, I, I, you know, I wonder if some of that might have even been explored in the last two episodes that we didn't get to film, three okay. episodes. Uh, but, um, yeah, I think it's so abrupt and we really haven't had a chance to talk about it. I, I, I'm assuming that yes, I will be moving out. I certainly hope so, yeah. Nice. And I mean, it's unfortunate, the season's not necessarily ending the way everybody planned, but looking back on the season, I mean, Cruz went through a lot, a lot. So is there a particular moment or scene or storyline that you know, you're particularly proud of? Who, um, wow, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I, I, I was able to do a scene in the first episode with um, Eamon uh, in Molly's. And um, I, I was kind of happy with how that scene played out, primarily just because it's rare that I get to have moments of that kind of, of, of like a, that personal of a scene with Eamon. Um, and in, in a lot of ways, he is very much so a father figure to all of us. Uh, and that moment felt like I was really kind of in an acting moment with like someone who I so highly respect. Uh, mm -hmm. And so for those reasons, I, you know, I, I, I'm proud to be able to do that, you know, uh, and, uh, b uh, and just to say that I've been able to work on something kind of that, uh, important to the show with someone who I've respected for so long, I suppose that's a point of pride for me. Great. And I know we kind of touched on this earlier, but we do want to officially congratulate you guys on the three season renewal. Like we said, very cool, very unprecedented. Um, I mean, I'm just curious, like what does it mean to you to be a part of like a television universe like this that has expanded to this magnitude and has created like such the legacy that it has? You know, I don't know that I feel that. Uh, I think um, I, I often go, you know, I, I often live my life completely unnoticed. It, it, it's funny, yes, we have, you know, something like 10 million viewers a week who watch our show, um, but there are many, many millions of other people that are not. And so it's like, I, I'm not one of those people that really gets noticed a lot or like, uh, so celebrity and fame and like, being part of something huge doesn't really register like that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I will say I am blown away week in and week out um, by the, just the, the loyalty, like the fan kind of 
fervency for the show. You know, I, I love doing it because I work with people who are genuinely awesome. Um, and I get to, I think, represent a pretty uh, positive Latino on network television. And that's like huge to me. Um, and, I, and, and it means the world that I get, that I've been chosen to be able to represent that. Um, but, uh, it, it, you know, I don't know. You know, it's, I, it's, hard, it's hard to explain. Like, you, uh, like when we go on these conventions, you know, to like France and stuff like that, I am still in shock that people over there know anything about us. And then, you know, you hear about fans that we have, I mean, worldwide. And it, I, I, yeah, I, I don't get it. it I, you know, it's like, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm just kind of watching my friends be idiots. Uh, and, but, you know, most of the time, I mean, obviously not what we're doing, like the nitty gritty great stuff that they write. But um, so much of it just feels like playtime when we're in it. Uh, that it's just like amazing that at the end of the day, we have like an hour of really interesting television that people are just drawn to, you know? And I just hope that uh, we can keep doing it. You know, I, I'll, I'll do this job, you know, they'll have to, they'll have to drag me out kicking and screaming. Uh, Cause I, 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 I love where I work. I love the people I work with. I love the city. It has adopted me since 2004. Uh, and I would never, you know, it, it is, it is the great job of my life. Does it feel like it's been eight years? Cause when I think about that, I'm like 2012. I'm like, that does, it does not feel like the show has been around that long. Um, when you talk to my joints, yes. <laughs> Other than that, no, like it's like, it has been, it is, it, it, it has kind of flown by this year specifically, like flew by. Are we like, out of nowhere, it was 2020. Um, and, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, other than the fact that you really, it, it, it is a physical job, that it is all the real gear and it takes um, a certain level of athleticism uh, that if you're not trying to keep up with, which I can be very bad at, uh, you feel it on, uh, when, when you're not prepared for it. Um, so, but other than, you know, the kinks and bad knees and stuff like that, not really. It's been, it's been, it's f flown by, really. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So, cool. And so, I mean, we can't let you go without knowing kind of how you're spending your quarantine. So, is there anything you're binge watching that we might need to know about? I mean, I'm binge watching all sorts of stuff. Right now, I'm obsessed with YouTube and watching, like, a lot of, like, uh, best, um, best, uh, best stuff stuff. So, like, you know, like, the best uh, dialogue is, uh, in any given movie or like best Martin Scorsese scene or best Tarantino scene or top 10 this or top 20 that. Like, I'm obsessed with that. I'm in the process of uh, writing a movie. Um, and so that, excuse me, not a movie, a limited series. Uh, mm -hmm. And so being able to kind of draw from all of that stuff has been indispensable. Um, and I'm also, well, right before, the coronavirus pandemic hit and we were all kind of quarantined. Uh, Christian Stolte and I were actually in the process of making a movie he was gonna star and I was gonna direct. Uh, and um, we were gonna film it in June, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like that's gonna be able to happen now. Um, so I've been trying to keep myself busy to keep that alive and kind of create this other project with a friend of mine uh, because now I have all this, you know, un uh, time I wasn't expecting. Um, and I figure the only thing I can do is kind of try to be creative uh, and come up with something uh, uh, that hopefully can have a life after all of this craziness. Yeah, great. So, um, I mean, that's relatively all we've got. Bryna, anything else? Any last minute notes? No, I think that's it. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. This was so much fun. It was my pleasure. Thank you, guys. And um, one of these days, hopefully, I'll meet you at Molly's. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Take care, Joe. We'll talk soon. Thank you very much. You guys be good. Thank you so much. Stay safe out there. You as well. Bye. <laughs>